Remember our last launch where we reached 40 meters with four engines? Well, we have been busy here at James Space. We've got a new team member on board and we've been implementing some new tech, like an RC controller and an entirely different flight computer system. But while we were working on all of that, we figured why not push the limits a bit more. So get ready, because in this video, we're going to see what happens when we launch a rocket with not four, but five engines. The biggest and most exciting news first. Since January 1st, I haven't been working alone on the project anymore. Let me introduce you to my new team member, Michael. With a background in software engineering and having graduated from a high technical vocational college, Michael brings a wealth of expertise to James Space. He'll be taking the lead in our software development efforts here. And later in today's video, Michael will share more insights about the implementation of the RC controller. During our work on the RC controller implementation, we found ourselves in the need of a quick break. So we decided to launch the Buffalo L one more time, but with an additional engine, just for the fun of it. For this one, not too much preparation was needed. The addition of one engine leads to an increase in force, which means that the thrust vector control system must steer less to create an equal amount of torque on the rocket. Thus, to achieve the same stability as in the previous launch, the controller gains must be adjusted to account for the additional thrust, according to this formula. Furthermore, we simulated the flight in open rocket to determine the maximum time of ascent and the maximum flight duration and adjusted these values in our flight software. We had to reprint one part, but then everything was ready for another attempt. Despite our high hopes, our latest launch fell short of our anticipated altitude, reaching only 60 meters, instead of the projected 120 meters. This discrepancy can be attributed to two main factors. First, the long hold down clamp time, and second, the altitude losses due to the instability in the later phases of the flight. A possible explanation for the instability could be the lower thrust at the end, which we did not yet account for in the control software. Another reason could have been the absence of a beneficial high roll rate observed in the previous launch. Still, all mechanisms deployed as expected, but unexpectedly, the rocket landed in a tree. Legend has it that the upper stage's parachute still hangs in the tree today. <laughs> <laughs> After frying another pyro channel on the Buffalo Rift E flight computer on our last launch, we needed a new one. First, we thought of simply upgrading the existing version to Buffalo Rev F, which would have simply featured more robust pyro channels. But then Michael came up with a game-changing idea. Let him tell us more about it. As the complexity of our projects increases, we approach the limitations of a single microcontroller design, such as pin shortages and the lack of processing power. Further, for every project we make, we have to design a new flight computer to fit the needs accordingly. This is where Buffalo Stack, our brand new flight computer system, comes into play. All these problems can be solved by making a highly modular flight computer design, made up of different modules featuring a dedicated microcontroller, each concerned with a very specific task. One module runs the main flight software and handles telemetry. Another one provides readily processed sensor data. And yet another one handles the outputs. Resulting in Buffalo Core, Buffalo Fusion and Buffalo Out. Buffalo Core is always required. It is powered by a LiPo battery and features the power management for the entire flight computer system. Further, it bears functionality to store flight data and embeds connectivity. Then there is Buffalo Fusion. Its task is to perform reliable state estimation and provide accurate position, velocity and attitude estimates to the core board for flight decisions and TVC. We achieve this by fusing IMU and barometer data in real time using state-of-the-art sensor fusion algorithms. We also plan on incorporating GNSS signals 
into future versions of this board to facilitate longer flights with larger deviations from the launch site. The Fusion module operates in different modes to fit the varying circumstances during different stages of the flight. For example, in stationary mode, when the rocket sits still on the launch pad, the accelerometer is used to estimate the rocket's attitude based on Earth's gravity, since it is free of drift. However, during flight, gravity is not the only force acting on the rocket, so attitude is primarily de determined by integrating gyroscope readings. To mitigate the effects of drift and to define a reference altitude, sensors are calibrated before flight. The third board is the Buffalo Outboard. This board incorporates pyro channels to trigger heating wires and electric igniters, as well as servo ports to control the thrust vector control system. The boards interface with each other through a stackable header that we call Buffalo Connect. Buffalo Connect supplies battery voltage, regulated 5 volts and regulated 3.3 volts from the core to all the other sub-boards. Further, this connect incorporates the communication interface, the I2C bus, where the core board is the master. A total of 255 fusion boards and outboards could be added to one core board which makes its use cases almost endless. Regarding microcontrollers, the core board still features the ESP32 to allow Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capabilities. For the first time ever, we used the STM32 line of microcontrollers on the Fusion and Out modules. They allow us to up our flight computer game and to get experience with microcontrollers that are used in the industry. Due to extensive data processing, the Fusion board is equipped with the fast STM32 F7 microcontroller. And due to the minimal requirements on the out module, the rudimentary STM32 G0 is used. To operate our rockets from a safe distance, we previously used Bluetooth and radio communication. For example, the NRF24 or the HC12 radio module. These systems worked, yet the amount of control we had from afar was limited and the distance from which we were able to operate and acquire telemetry was quite small. As he's previously, Michael will now tell us a bit more about the new RC controller implementation. As mentioned, our previous control and telemetry system has some major drawbacks with the two main disadvantages being its limited control options and its short operating range. With the Bluetooth setup, we achieved an operating range of only 30 meters maximum in optimal conditions, making it impossible to intervene in an emergency and to get invaluable telemetry data in real time. Also, interaction between rocket and smartphone was purely textual, whether it was arming flight modes or retrieving telemetry data. All information was sent and received solely in the form of text, making it difficult to control the rocket and find relevant information. With our rockets getting more sophisticated and expensive, this had to change. So we have come up with JM Mission Control. JM Mission Control is our new intuitive long-range ground control system based on RC communication. It consists of the FR Sky X9D RC transmitter and the ultra lightweight FR Sky Archer Plus RS receiver. FR Sky has established itself amongst the leaders for RC technology in the model sports sector and is known for providing top-notch radio gear. It also features the open source HDX firmware with the ability to program custom Lua scripts for telemetry display. With this new setup, we can now manage our rocket reliably over a distance of more than 2 km. After completely redesigning the operation procedure and programming custom telemetry screens, we now have a modern, intuitive and reliable ground control station that will accompany us on many future flights. Ready to turn your rocketry passion into reality? Then join the James Space Patreon community today. With our rocket design engineer tier, you will unlock STL files of our Buffalo Mini and Buffalo L rockets putting the power to build your own version in your hands. Struggling with flight computer design? Then our new avionics tier offers exclusive access to our flight computer files crafted from over five years of experience in model rocket development and flight computer design. For just 7.5 euros per month, you'll gain invaluable insights and tutorials 
guiding you through the process of ordering your own boards online, understanding the features to uploading code. If you got interested and want to support us, then head over to Patreon P-A-T-R-E-O-N under James Space or click the link down below. And that wraps up another exciting video. The countdown to our next launch, operated by our brand new RC controller, has already begun. Finally, thank you for your interest in model rocketry. And until next time, keep dreaming big and reaching for the stars. To achieve the same stability. No, 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 no. Because they should write it. Okay. Legendary. <laughs> <laughs>